Hey guys, today I want to talk about is there a way to live on a super low budget in the Philippines? Is there a way to live on a super low budget? Well, I had to think about this one for a while because you know how I am against super low budgets. Now, a lot of people ask me what, what amount can, can they survive on? I don't know because each individual is different because you know, when you're on those super low budgets, you cannot be a big spender. You have to be very thrifty and hold that money tight to you. And before you make any decision, you should sit on it and think about it for 24 hours. That's what I tell people. I don't care if it's a bag of rice or what it is. You know, whatever it is, think about it. Say, is this going to be good? a good investment for me? Rice is always kind of a good investment, unless you're diabetic or something like that. And us, as older people, we have to take that into consideration too over here. But living on a, a super low budget requires living totally different than most people. Now, you can live in one of these apartments over here and live on a super low budget and just have like cheap Wi-Fi, um, keep your electric bill down and use fans. And you'll probably be fine. Most people can, can live like that. As long as you have a fan or something like that, you're going to be okay. You need, definitely need a refrigerator. A lot of Filipinos live with no refrigerator. I find that very difficult, okay? I don't think I could live without a refrigerator. I need my cold drinks, especially if you don't have AC. But I did want to put out there, it is possible. And also, you know, you're not going to be able to get out much with your friends or go out and do a lot of things. And you also definitely, definitely need to put in your budget when you plan your budgets and stuff like that. How much it's going to cost you for insurance? And you should always have, like I said, that emergency backup. Don't come over here thinking that, well, I'm going to beat the odds and I'm going to survive that. And I'm going to die in my sleep when I'm 85 years old or 90 years old. You know what? Most people don't go out that way. Most people, they usually suffer or get sick for a while. They go into a nursing home, usually for 30 to 90 days in their last days. That's just the way it happens. I won't say most, a lot. Okay? My father had Parkinson's when he went before he passed away and I've seen a lot of people in my family that died and most of them went out suffering in their older years or whatever and it's 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 rough it's just part of the way you you know we we, we live we have to you have to go out some way and unfortunately sometimes it's the hard way but anyway you have to plan for that guys one of the things you have to do is make sure whoops <laughs> sorry about that guys anyway you have to plan for um, your death. It's the one thing that most um, low-budget expats don't even think about. They figure, well, somebody else will take care of it. I'll let the government worry about it or whatever. I don't care what happens to me when I'm dead. I'm, when I'm dead, I'm dead. Well, have the responsibility to at least take care of your body, whether it be cremated or whatever. Over here, cremations are super cheap. They're probably like about 500, 600, 800 bucks in that range, okay? That's nothing. You can buy a card here. I think the name of the organization is St. Peter's, St. Peter's or whatever. And you buy a card, you put it in your wallet. When you die, they can burn you. They can cremate you if you want, if you want to go out that way. I myself want to be buried in a coffin and that's, that's just me. I want to have a normal Christian funeral or whatever you want to call it. I don't want to have any Viking funerals. It's not my cup of tea, even though I got the Viking blood in me. You know, it's just not something I, the way I want to go out. But... You know, when you're living over here, you have to plan on these things. The other thing is, if you're going to live over here on a budget, there's one thing that you can do that you can cut back on your expenses. And that's live in the province. Okay, but then you lack those medical facilities. And sometimes you can get into the provinces. If you really plan, you can get on the outskirts of a city or a town where there's proper medical facilities where you can still be in the kind of in the provinces and still have like that farm life or whatever you can have ducks you can have chickens you can raise chickens and and do things like that and live a decent life and grow all kinds of food or what have you the only problem is if a typhoon comes through and wipes you out and that's part of the problem here in the philippines is we have constant constant typhoons so you can get weather maps here and these weather maps will kind of help you pick out a place that's less likely to get hit by typhoons. Our place actually is one of those places. Okay, around Tracy Martires and around this area here, 
we get hit less likely we're less likely to get hit by typhoons here than other areas is hard we get we get them but by the time they hit here it's usually just a lot of wind and rain it's not that bad okay but the other thing is costs food costs things like that out in the provinces you can talk people down because they're poor okay and i'm not telling people to you know not give the these people what they're due for their work for 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 the garden stuff but don't don't talk them down too much on their fruits and vegetables or chickens or whatever they're trying to sell you or a pig or what have you make sure you, you give them their fair their fair you know amount of money so that they don't hate you for that you don't need enemy enemies in, in your in your neighborhood or whatever always treat people good and treat people fair okay and I know you don't have a lot of money but make sure you, you keep friends in, in your in your area you're gonna need those friends if you get sick or something like that or if you're living alone or whatever and it's good to have a wife that knows how to live like that too. live poor and if you come here on one of those lower budgets, like about 800, 900, 1,000, I wouldn't recommend less than that. But I know some people are, and I know some people will, and, and it's just part of life, I guess, that those, some people will not listen, and they will fail. They will fail. Some of those people will fail. Some people will succeed, too. But a lot of those people fail. You also have to pay your, your tourist dues, stuff like that. Your, and then you have to leave every three years. You have to make sure you have money for that. And you have to be able to have the ability to save for that. When emergencies come up, guess what? You're going to dip into some of that money. And you might not have time to, to save that money back up to leave and then come back again. And you want to make sure, guys, you always have a safety net. Always have that safety net. I can't, if there's one thing I can't stress enough, it's that safety net. But... Living in the in in the provinces, yes, you can live cheaper, but it's not a it's not a healthy living always, unless you're constantly showering and washing and keeping your skin clean, and staying away from mosquitoes and things like that. You need to have like use off or whatever to keep mosquitoes away from you. You need to be be safe. Keep a fan on you at night, not just to keep the mosquitoes off off of you, but also also to keep you cool and keep your skin dry and not too damp because over here the humidity does so much damage to your body like it, it just it, your skin takes the biggest hit I think and it has with me and my skin is just starting to come back thank God I've got a great dermatologist over at De La Salle University Hospital and she's phenomenal and that's another thing that, that, that I'm thankful for here is De La Salle University Hospital in, here in the Philippines and that's that's a great hospital let me tell you and, and I live in like I said I live in an area where if you do want to live provincial style but still live um, near a city actually in the capital of Cavite the capital of Cavite is Tracy Materas and guess what there's a lot of towns around here like Indang and places like that where you could go hack out a farmers living or if you want to live out in the woods or whatever and you don't want to live near a lot of people guess what these are the places to come and guess what? You're not far from Manila. That's the biggest thing that I try to sell on people is that you're close to Manila. If you need to run up and get something, you can go up and get something still. And if you, you still you still want that provincial lifestyle, but you don't want the typhoons, you don't want all that, this is the area. You know, look at the guys now that live down in, in Dumaguete and, and Cebu and, and Bohol and a lot of these other places that got damaged. I forget the name of the other places. There's a few other places that got damaged too, but the places that got damaged from the typhoon. You know, I mean, they're, they're probably thinking now about, you know, not living in a place that gets slammed by typhoon so much because there are a lot of places that you can get away from all that, you know. But when you're thinking about low budget living, guys, think all this stuff in your head. Watch my videos. I can teach you some of these things about budgets and things like that. But I do not recommend that people come over here on less than a thousand. But I know people will. And if you're going to do it, make sure you do it right and you plan well, guys. God bless.